Assalamu alaikum. I am Dr. Saeed Ali Mardan Admi. Welcome to my channel. In this lecture, we will discuss how we can evaluate area of a given region with the help of double integrals. For this purpose, we will learn exercise 15.3, question number 6 from Thomas Calculus 12th edition book. The statement of problem is, sketch the region bounded by the given lines and curves, then express region's area as an iterated double integral and evaluate the integral. In question number six, the curves given to us are y is equal to natural log of x, y is equal to natural log of x, and the line x is equal to e, and e is actually exponential function whose value is approximately equal to 2.71, and all and our required region of integration will be in the first quadrant as per requirement of this particular question. In order to solve this problem, in order to learn this concept, we must know what is the formula for area of region with the help of double integrals. The formula is area of a given region R is double integral over the region R dA, where dA is a small patch of that particular area. Now, in this question, y is equal to natural log of x and y is equal to natural log of x are the graphs of natural logarithms. The line x is equal to e, e is exponential function, which is approximately equal to 2.71 is a vertical line. In the next step, we will learn the graphs of y is equal to natural log of x. In order to plot the graph of y is equal to natural log of x, we can use different values of x in this equation of y is equal to natural log of x. For example, you can see that natural log function is undefined at x equal to 0 or any other negative value. If you substitute x with x here in y is equal to natural log of x with any negative value, for example, natural log of minus 1, it will be undefined. So natural log of, is natural log of x is defined for values which are greater than 0. So I have used different values of x like 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.751 and so on up till 7. And then I have calculated the values of y for these particular values of x so that I can have the ordered pair. So after calculating all these ordered pairs, I have plot the graph by plotting all these ordered pairs and then joining them. You can see this is the point 0 0.25 is equal to minus 1.385, which is approximately here. At 0 0.5, we have the value minus 0 0.693, which is approximately here below the x-axis. Similarly, if you see this point, 1, 0, when x equal to 1, y is 0 because natural log of 1 is 0. Remember this thing, natural log of 1 is 0 and so on. When we plot all these points on coordinate plane and then after plotting these points, we can join them. So we will get the graph of y is equal to natural log function. y is equal to natural log of x. Similarly, for the other graph, y is equal to two natural log of x, we can use different values of x and calculate, we can calculate the corresponding values of y for this equation, y is equal to two natural log of x. Then with the help of these ordered pairs, we have this graph. Now, Please note that what is the difference between this graph and the previous graph. In previous graph, we have the same value of x, but in the second graph, for the same values of x, the values of y will become double. You can see the difference between the tables. If this is the point at 1.25, the value of y is equal to natural of x is 0 0.22, then in the other graph, the same value is doubled. So our graph is lifted a little bit up towards y-axis. So in the next step, we will plot these graphs on a single plane to get the required region of integration like this. This red graph will represent y is equal to natural log of x. This blue graph represents y is equal to natural log of x. And the third boundary is represented by the green line x is equal to 
x is equal to e, which is approximately equal to 2.71. So this is, so this graph represents all the three boundaries, y is equal to natural log of x, y is equal to two natural log of x, and x is equal to e. And the intersection, this intersecting portion, this intersecting portion is our required region of integration. In the next step, I have zoomed it a little bit and highlight it so that you get a much clearer picture of the graph. So this is our required region of integration. If I zoom this one and highlight this one, this is my required region of integration. For pi is equal to natural log of x, y is equal to natural log of x, and x is equal to e. So after plotting, after graphing, we will evaluate the area. In order to calculate the area, I am going to use y as my inner variable and x as my outer variable. In order to calculate the limits of inner variable, I will pass a vertical arrow. I will pass a vertical arrow through this region. Watch it again. This arrow enters the region at the boundary where the value of y is natural log of x and exits to the boundary where the value of y is true natural log of x. So the limits of inner variable are natural log of x to two natural log of x. Since x is my outer variable, then for outer variable, we will check the range of variable or range of the region along that particular axis. Along x-axis, our region starts from point one and ends at point E, where the value of x is E. So our limits are one to E. So after calculating these limits, we can evaluate this integral. Integration of dy is y for the limits natural log of x to two natural log of x. In the next step, we will apply fundamental theorem of calculus, upper limit minus lower limit. Then after simplification, we have natural log of x for the limits one to e. Please note that we don't have any formula for the integration of natural log of x. So we will use integration by parts so that we can evaluate this integral with one as a multiplier. So in the formula of integration by parts, we have two functions. I have displayed all the three points so that you can get a much better idea. In the formula of integration by parts, we have two functions. We, we will always take u as a function whose derivative is possible and we take v as a function whose integration is possible. So by using this concept, we will take natural log of x as u of x and we will take one as v in this formula. So after replacement, we have u is equal to natural log of x. Instead of v, we have one. Instead of v, we have one. And instead of u, we have natural log of x. In the next step, we will perform the simplification by applying the integration. And please note that in this above equation, this equation, area is equal to one to e integral of natural log of x dx. If I have to apply the limits with integration by parts, I will always apply integration by parts formula first and then on the answer of the result, I will apply the limits. So integrating integration of one is x, integration of one is x and the derivative of natural log of x, one over x, x and x will be canceled out. So we have natural log of x into x minus one dx. Integration of one is x. In the next step, we will apply limits, upper limit minus lower limit. For upper limit, we will replace x with e. And for lower limit, we will replace x with one. So we have natural log of e into e minus e minus natural log of one into one minus one. In order to solve this, this step, note that natural log of e is one. Natural log and exponential function are reciprocal of each other. They will cancel out and we will get one here. And natural log of one is zero. So from the first record, we will get e minus e. And from the second record, we will get zero minus one. So e and e will be canceled out. 
and zero multiplied by one is zero, and this minus one and this minus will become plus one, which is the required answer for my area. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please like, subscribe, and recommend this video to your peers if it is helpful for you. Allah Hafiz.